Apple. Basically, it's a network-wide ad blocking technology. So it's a software that you basically install on something like a Raspberry Pi. It's very simple, very straightforward. And what that allows you to do is basically uh, block ads within your network. So you may be using some kind of ad blocker within your uh, browser, for example. So you can have a Chrome extension or Firefox, Firefox extension that helps block the ads within your network. But sometimes that kind of causes the browser to slow down. And if you want to improve the speed of your browser, uh, doing uh, deploying something like the Pi Hole across your network uh, really, really is helpful. Plus, on top of that, there are some devices where you may not be able to run such an uh, extension to block ads. So for example, on your phone, uh, you can block the ads if you basically deploy a Pi Hole within your network. You can block uh, ads on all across, across all your uh, devices. So you can have it blocked on your laptops, you can have it blocked on your desktops, your mobile phones, uh, tablets, and all those type of devices. So that's one way that you can basically deploy, deploy uh, Pi Hole and start blocking ads across all those things. Now, it doesn't block all ads. Uh, for example, if you're running YouTube, it'll still uh, allow allow those YouTube videos to go through because uh, those are basically, you know, uh, being sent through Google. And the only way to really block those is to block Google. <laughs> so there's some caveats to this. But overall, this does help with blocking a lot of the ads that you get and it helps speed up the network uh, overall. So let's have a look quickly at the instructions on how to install it, but let's have a look at the web page first. So you can install it on many types of Linux uh, operating systems here, Fedora, uh, CentOS, uh, Docker, you can even deploy it via Docker, Ubuntu, Debian, and of course, Raspbian. Uh, here, the reason it's called Pi Hole, again, because the idea is you basically run it on a Raspberry Pi. And you know, it gives you instructions on how to do that, and it's really simple, it's basically one instruction. You can use it as a DNS server if you wish. Um, you can black, uh, you can block ads uh, even on the go. So you can use a uh, basically VPN into your uh, Pi Hole and then start blocking ads in that fashion as well. But the idea is really is that you help improve your network performance, uh, the speed of which web pages load because a lot of times the web pages slow down because they're just loading up these ads in the background. So it has a very simple interface, very very neat. It's actually a pretty well thought out um, project. So if you go ahead and use this project and you actually like it, I suggest that you go and donate a little bit to help, uh, you know, the, the, the building of this uh, software, which is very useful. Uh, I just managed to deploy it on a Raspberry Pi here, a Raspberry Pi uh, 3 uh, B, not even the B plus, and it runs fine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. And I'm going to do it inside a virtual machine, uh, just with a basic Ubuntu server um, installation. There's nothing else on that uh, server. It's super basic. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you just how easy and I'm going to walk you through the installation process. So here we're going to install it. Basically, all we're going to do is run one command, one simple curl command. And it's basically going to do the whole installation for us via the command line. This is the one tricky part. If you're not uh, very um, comfortable with the command line, uh, this is one probably tricky part that you may run into. But honestly, it's only one command, so it's really not that hard. And the rest of it is kind of a, an GUI method. Um, it will ask if you're running as a super user. So if you're not, you know, you go ahead and run sudo beforehand. Uh, and I just did this for example purposes to show you that it, it, it does check if you're, you're gonna be running as a root user. So go ahead and enter your root user password. Oops. And now it's going to go through the basic installation. Okay, so here is basically the automated installer is letting us, letting us know that this installer will transform your device into a network wide ad blocker. Go ahead and hit okay. Pi hole is free, but powered by your donation. So again, if you go ahead and deploy this and you actually like it and you get it, find it very useful, go ahead and donate to the project. It helps them uh, keep continually building it. And it says uh, Pi hole is a server, so it needs a static IP address to function properly. In the next section, you may choose your network, your current network settings, DHCP, or manually edit them. So that's another caveat. You do need a static IP to on whatever device you'll be running on. You do need a static IP. Uh, for the pie hole. So make sure you're prepared to go ahead and do that. 
So then next we're gonna be selecting our upstream DNS provider uh, to use your own to like custom. So if you have your own custom DNS that you use, you rolled out, you can go ahead and do that or just choose one of the ones here. I'm just gonna go ahead and choose Google for um, simplicity purposes. And then it says here, Pi-hole relies on the third party list in order to block ads. You can use the suggestions below or, or add uh, your own after the installation. To deselect any list, use the arrow keys and spacebar. So here it just comes with some basic, uh, uh, basically block lists that uh, you can either deselect or select. Uh, they're all selected by default. And I'm just gonna go ahead and leave them all as default. We hit tab and okay. Select the protocols, we're just gonna leave both protocols on, but you can remove IPv6 if you know that's something that you don't have within your network. Then it's gonna ask us for the static IP address. And it says, uh, do you want to use your current network settings as a static address? We're just gonna go ahead and yes. Uh, make sure you uh, know this static IP if you're doing this on a, not on a virtual machine, uh, but make sure you keep an eye out for this IP, IP address because you're, you're gonna need it a little later. And it says here, it is possible for your router could still try to assign this IP to a, uh, to a device, which could cause conflict, but in most cases, the router is smart enough to not to do that. If you are worried, either manually set the address or modify the DHCP reservation pool so it does not include the IP uh, you want. It is also possible to use a DHCP, DHCP reservation, but if you are going to do that, you might as well set a static address. So again, just go, in, go into your router settings and tell it not to give out the address uh, for whatever device you're gonna be installing Piho on. Uh, so just basically reserve that and set it as a static IP. And it says, do you wish to install the web admin interface? Uh, it is recommended that you do so, and I say you do because I'll go ahead and show you the back end of mine, personal one, show you how kind of works. Uh, but if you don't want it, you don't have to install it. Do you wish to install the web server Light TDP VD? Uh, if you disable this and, and you do not have an existing web server installed, the web interface will not function. So again, if you're installing this on your home server and you have Apache installed or Nginx, things like that, um, you can basically forego installing uh, the Light TPD server, uh, but if you don't, go ahead and install it so that um, you'd be able to access the web interface. And do you want to log queries? We're going to go ahead and yes, because we want to log those queries. And then select the privacy mode for FTL. Uh, basically, do you want it to hide the domains? Do you want to hide the domains in the clients? Do you want to be an anonymous node or disable the stats? Uh, we're going to go ahead and show it everything. And then it's going into the main installation. And the installation is complete. It says configure devices to use the pi-hole as their DNS server using and it gives you the IP address. Uh, if you set a new IP address, you should restart the uh, Pi. Uh, install log and is uh, basically let's see Pi hole. And then to view the web interface, you basically go to the address that it shows you there. Uh, of course, this is inside a virtual machine and it's not added, so that address won't work. <laughs> um, but it also says uh, it gives you the login password for your web an uh, web admin page. Uh, so go ahead and write that down so that you can log into the back end. Um, if you don't write it down and you forget it, it's really easy to basically change it. So just kind of like either way, you might want to write it down. Um, the one little caveat here says like if, if you have set this new IP address, you should restart the Pi. Um, again, if you installed it, not something else other than a Raspberry Pi, that might be a little confusing for some people, but it's just basically asking you to restart the, the device. Again, if you set a new IP address. But all basically we do now, is just hit OK, it's done. It basically brings you back to um, your bash prompt. And um, from here, you can just go into your uh, web interface. Okay, so now, uh, basically you go into your web admin by going to the IP address of the um, uh, the Pi or whatever device you installed Pi hole on, and then slash admin. Once you go there, you log in. And after the login in, it takes you to this dashboard. And here you're basically seeing you know, the basic uh, statistics about you know your network running through Pi hole it tells you the domain block list, the percent blocked, queries blocked, the total queries, how many clients are connected. Uh, tells you even uh, temperature for the Pi and little things like that, the memory usage. 
So it's very, uh, very convenient things, very all the little things that you need to know about your uh, Pi Hole and how it's running are listed here. Again, it tells you, you know, in a nice graph shows you how many things were blocked, uh, you know, splits it into query types, uh, top permitted domains, top block domains, all these little things. It's very useful. You can go through here and it has a lot of things um, uh, that should basically show you how to, uh, how to add, you know, more uh, uh, block lists to your, to your uh, Pi. So you can block even more things uh, if you wish to do so. Or if you have a very specific type of block list that you want to add into your network, you can do that through here. It's very convenient, very simple to use. Um, and I you know, recommend that you guys try it out. Go ahead and try out the Pi Hole uh, if you want to start blocking ads within your network as opposed to doing it you know, the browser level. So again, uh, go ahead and check out the Pi Hole website for more installation uh, guidance and uh, other little things. So you can check out the wiki and that's at pi dash hole.net so that's a little thing you have to keep in mind that has a little dash in there so and again if you um if you really like the project go ahead and go ahead into their donate uh button so you can go ahead and donate to the um uh to the to the project to help uh, fundraise for you know more continued development of this of this project um they also have a patreon so you can sign up through patreon as well or you can give the one-time donation uh so it's a great project i suggest you know if you want to go ahead and block ads within your network Go ahead and check them out uh, and uh, donate more to them because uh, they definitely need it. So uh, thank you guys for tuning in. And let me know if you like this video by hitting that like button. Uh, if you haven't done so, go ahead and subscribe uh, for you can get more videos like this. And go ahead, if you have any questions about Pi Hole, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. Uh, go ahead and email me as well. And if you haven't done so, go ahead and check out the affiliate links that I have in, in the uh, description below so you can get some uh, a uh, little bit of a discount on over on some web hosting. Uh, so I'll go ahead and see you guys later and have a good one.